Now my current predicament may look a little questionable. It all makes sense real soon. Cam asked, what's your opinion on YouTube and its possible filmmaking opportunities? Which I think is a great question based off of this film. Yeah. My outlook on YouTube is super open and enthusiastic. I think um, one thing that I think we, we didn't really touch on too, YouTube is, is just a platform, right? And using that platform, you could also leverage that to also make your films, right? Like this, this entire project was the product of, and at least from a financial standpoint, of working with the brands that we wanted to work with kind of thing, right? So between the wireless headsets, lenses that we had, the camera bodies that we were using, locations, like those were all things that we kind of needed. And it's nice as, a, as filmmakers, like when I need something or, one of the bigger bottlenecks for me to really tell the story I want to tell is budget. But I like the Venn diagram that we were talking about before, where this Venn diagram of like, I need these tools in order to do it, but I also need the finances and resources so I could hire a crew to actually make sure that we get this thing done. When those overlap, and that, that's kind of what you saw a little bit in No Good Legend, because when we released those BTS videos, like that was kind of part of the deal. But a lot of that, a lot of what you saw in No Good Legend would have never happened if it wasn't for brands like, like Atlas and everybody else being able to support that happening. And I think you won't, you might not get that necessarily in Hollywood. The people that kind of buy into that are much bigger and less accessible. Where if you were on YouTube, the same way that you can make a talk to me being from the former YouTube, like we're talking about that leverage point and using it as a jump off point, you can still use it within itself too. And if I'm somebody that's a director that's practicing my skills or on YouTube, and I start partnering with brands, I could put those resources together to actually make the film happen. But it's similar to, in a way, sponsors for anything, not just filmmaking, but people like big companies will sponsor projects or sports games or whatever, kind of the same way that Hollyland or any of these brands sponsored No Good Legend. So it's, it's kind of just this new evolving approach to it to where I feel like there's a lot of, you could say, beta testing happening right now between yeah. know, stuff like what we're doing right now with No Good Legend or past films, or a great example is Danny Gewirtz with I Think I'm Sick. That was a, probably the first time you'd seen any sort of film that's not just a YouTube travel film being featured on the main platform of YouTube. So there's a lot that's changing with it, and I think that everything evolves, and I like to say that YouTube is probably at that evolution point. It's helped also personally with my career as a cinematographer, it's helped worlds. Because when I started YouTube, I knew some things, but honestly it was, you know how you mentioned Dan, just learning as we're going. And that was like every week, I, I especially putting out a lot of educational stuff, I had to teach every single week because I got held to the demand of uploading every week. And in that, I ran out of knowledge really, really fast. And what I thought I knew, I didn't. So instead of just giving up, I kind of went to YouTube, ironically enough, learned the topic, learned it myself, and then reworded it in my own kind of learnings and put it back out there. So it's gotten me to, one, learn a lot, but then gotten me the access of working with, like one of the brands I work very closely with is Aperture, because I love Aperture, I love their lights, and I'm a very lighting heavy DP to where they've helped influence kind of my ability to do things that I might not be able to had I not had the YouTube platform. So for that, I'm, some, it's, I'm really grateful, but it's interesting to see. And I've talked to a lot of, you know, older industry DPs, gaffers, whoever, that have a very different original opinion on the whole new social media wave, we'll call it, to where they kind of hate it, but then they start to realize like, oh, you're getting these benefits from like whatever brand and to make what we want to do. That's actually really fascinating and it's something that inevitably is going to change. I don't know how it's going to, but it's changing already. So it's just gonna kind of continue to kind of go down that path. Yeah, no, I feel the same way. I went to finance school, I didn't go to film school. So the contacts that you would get in your early 20s as a filmmaker are things I just, I'm, I'm not still not privy to, right? Mm -hmm. But you still want to be a participant in practice of craft. And I think what YouTube has done is it's um, it's opened up the gates for people that want to get into filmmaking to not feel like that they have to be part of a certain crowd in order to do so. You can get a light, a camera, a lens, and something you want to shoot, and you can do that right now, and you can have it posted for tomorrow. Where before there was almost a, a there was literally there was a gate that was kept that you have to kind of fight your way through or network your way through that doesn't exist anymore, right? And again, like Brady said, it's still very very new. So the people that are used to that kind of um, original way of doing things may not understand how we would be able to get nine of us together and then go and shoot a film out in, in Hollywood 
and then have a premiere on YouTube. And when you think about like, even when you talk with numbers in terms of like views on a YouTube video, more people that are watching some of these films that are posted on YouTube, sometimes are more people that see it at a festival. Mm -hmm. Like you might have more, you will have, you might have significantly more views than that at a festival, which also doesn't negate the fact that some people might want to go further with some of your projects later, right? So it is a very much, the gates have kind of been opened, which is still a very new thing. Um, and it open, but it does open itself to being able to practice your craft and also this new style of collaborating with other people, thinking the same thing, and actually make some of these projects, which is nice. And, but with that also comes kind of this oversaturation of like now everybody can have an FX3 and a quick Amaran light and shoot their version of a film. So there's definitely more competition and weeds that you kind of have to fight through as well. So it's everything's got its pros and cons. And there might be a case in that in that sense that it it opens the opportunity, but it also helps push quality upward over time. Because if anyone can do it, then to excel, you have to really commit to it and bring forth excellence.